Now let's go ahead and implement our search functionality. So I'm going to go to the combo.js and uh, I'm going to change a few things here. So when the user sets the items, um, I'm not actually going to put them into the selection box just yet. I want to wait until the user starts typing. Then I want to filter the items and then put any items that match what the user is typing into the selection box. So I'm just going to create an items list variable. And I'll call it items because item, well, I'll call it item, item list. And then I'll call this value instead, values. And then this is just going to set item list equal values. And then I'm going to remove the code that updates the selection box and say, add selections. So instead of just uh, emptying the box, I'm going to have to do a couple of things. So first I want to keep track of uh, how many items have been added. So I'm going to create an item count. And in here, I'm going to set item count equals zero. And I'm making this inside the closure so that I can refer to it from some of my, some of my other functions. And uh, then for each item in the item list, I'm going to add the item to the div box and I'm also going to increment item count. And then when I get out of here, I'll know how many things have been added. And I'm going to create a variable num items. shown items and I'm also going to create a variable up here called max items and this would be probably a property that you would want to provide a setter for so that the user could set the number of items in the combo box but basically it's going to be the maximum number of items that are shown so shown items is going to be equal to item count and then if shown items greater than max items we'll set shown items equal to max items and then we're also going to add item height and that's how much space each thing in the combo list takes up so 16 pixels and then we're going to set the height of the selection box to shown items times item height. Now, if the number of items is zero, if we don't have any matches, then we're still going to have a border here, even if we set the height to zero. So what we want to do also is say if shown items equal zero, then we'll hide the selection box, else we'll show the selection box. So now we want to add the search function that filters through the items and then calls add selections. And this is going to be called every time the user types a character into the combo box. So combo.pup search. 
So in this function, first we want to get the thing that the user's typed in the combo box so far. So So the key is equal to combo dot value. And then I want to always downcase this so that I'm matching, I'm going to end up matching downcase against downcase characters for the department list. So to lower case. And then I also want to keep track of the previous search term so that I only update things when the text really changes. So previous search is empty. And then here I'm going to say if he is equal to previous search and return. Otherwise, set previous search to key. And then I have to filter my department list. So, so the item list is an item list. So item list dot filter and then I want to return the item to lower case dot index of key and this is going to be minus one if the key is not found in here, and it's going to be zero or greater if the key is found. So return that greater than minus one. So basically, if the thing is found in the list, it's going to be included in the results. Otherwise, it won't be included in the results. So then I just need to call add selections of Need one more thing here. So filtered is going to be equal to the return value here. And then add selection filtered. So let's go ahead and try that out. See where we are. Reload. So we want this to not appear until we start typing. So it's looking pretty good. So let's get rid of that box until the user starts typing. So basically, we only want to call create selection on the first search. So if selection box is null, then create selection. So let's go ahead and see what happens now. Oh, I also don't want to call create selection here. So let's see how that goes. So no selection. And then it pops up. And if I type something that isn't found, it's, it's hidden. And the scroll box seems to work. So now I have to implement clicking on these things. And I also want to implement arrow keys so that, uh, um, so that there's a rolling selection. So for example, um, if I go to Google and uh, so I start typing, you get the little pop-up. And you can arrow down and arrow up. 
And in here, so you scroll off and come back on the top, scroll off and come back on the bottom. So I want to do that kind of thing here too, except I want to go all the way to the end of the list. So let's just do the clicking on it first, and then we'll do the scrolling through the list with the arrow keys in the next video. So to click on the list, when I add the selections here, I also want to attach a click handler to each of these item divs. So item div dot click. And then I want to make sure that I only have one item div for each of these functions instead of having them all share an item div. So I really did want to put that in here. So now there's a separate item div for each of these functions. And I'm going to call select item and item div. So what I want to do here is pass this back to the thing that called me. So this is basically the return result. And uh, so I have to pass a callback in here. And this will just be the item text that I'm passing back. And for now, let me go ahead and put it in my results page in this uh, ID right here, results. So and that's an ID. So it's just going to show it on the screen when I do that. And then I want to pass that in as a callback when I create the combo box. And then in my class, I'm going to add a callback parameter. And in here, callback selected item dot text. So let's see how that works. And I'm going to click on computer information systems and it shows computer information systems. And I also want to hide this when I get the selection. So let's go ahead and in our select item, I'm going to remove the selection box entirely. Selection box. Selection box. Dot remove. So that'll remove the selection box. And there we go. Oh, and I also have to set the selection box to null so that it gets recreated when I start typing again.
Great. So in the next video, we'll implement the arrow keys and return key.